So I am very excited to be bringing another recovery story interview um, to you all, the gang who are interested in this kind of thing. And it is a very special woman that I have not met. She's not been on my fern program. I know that she's been coming to some of the rest repair recover classes, but because she lives in British Columbia, we don't get to see her too often. And I know she does a lot of them on catch up, but I mainly see her featuring in our very wonderful Facebook group because she's been posting some pretty inspirational content. And I thought, I wanna have a chat with this woman and find out what's going on for her. How come she's so inspirational? And let's see if we can hear her story from her direct. So ladies and gentlemen of the crowd here, let me introduce you now, Angela Lawrence in British Columbia. Oh, Susie, I'm blushing. <laughs> I'm blushing. Good. You uh, should be. Yeah. You're, you're a very inspirational woman. But uh, for those that may not have seen Angela's post, and I would highly recommend you go back into the Facebook group and just search for Angela. She's been posting some fantastic posts about getting out into nature, which obviously, if you mm -hmm. live in British Columbia, is quite an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the thing that people always want to know is, what was your story? What happened for you? Tell us how ill you were. That's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> we can see where you are now. And what did you have to deal with? Because I know a lot of people will be like, yeah. Yeah. is there hope for me? And that's what oh, these yeah. are about. And the answer will always uh be yes. The answer is always yes, but yeah, I remember that. I remember watching every single recovery video that you that you did, as well as other YouTube channels, and um, they were so helpful, unbelievably helpful. And you know, my my story is an interesting one. I mean, we all have interesting stories, but it was a very long crash. So I had um, I got COVID for the first time in um, January. 2022, so January of last year, and I never fully recovered. Everyone else in my family recovered, um, but uh, the fatigue, there was a certain fatigue that, and it wasn't like the muscle fatigue so much. It was just, I was tired all the time. Yeah. And it was really clear. My doctor even said, it's probably the, the tail end of COVID. So, mm -hmm. you know, just keep going. She told me to rest, but I did not know what that meant. Like I, did not know how to rest in any way, shape, or form, no. Susie. That was that was uh, the antithesis of me. So I just pushed through. I I hiked. I worked out. I went on road trips. I worked, 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 and I I work in a you know quite a stressful place. I'm a mental health clinician, and I work with with adolescents. So um, and it just for six months. I, I I did that with right. lots of kind of confusion in between, like, why am I still tired? And my doctor at one point said, well, this probably isn't COVID now. Maybe it's your thyroid. So we, you know, it's like, okay, well, we'll check my thyroid. And, and uh, lots of panels of blood and, um, uh, and it wasn't until July. So now we're talking almost six months that <laughs> these other symptoms started to come up. And the first one was pa panic attacks, full yeah. on panic attacks and uh, heart palpitations going through the roof. And um, and I didn't think that was part of long COVID because we have long COVID discussions in in um, in the media. You know, I would read about long COVID, but I just thought it was, you know, maybe similar, like people just couldn't get rid of their cough or something like that. Like yeah. I. Okay. I didn't know what it was, right? So I'm like, well, this can't be long COVID. So, you know, so maybe it's my, you know, I'm in menopause. So maybe it's my hormones. Right. So I went down that path. And, and uh, that actually was quite helpful, I think. But it was like every week was like an, it was an advent calendar of, yes. of symptoms. That is a great way of describing it. Oh, it's yeah. So true. What's, yeah. what's through the window today? <laughs> what's through the window today? And, you know, gosh, in re retrospect, if I could have just relaxed more through yeah. that time, I think I wouldn't have crashed as hard as I did because mm -hmm. um, I just kept getting more and more anxious is mm -hmm. what happened and fearful. And um, and then sometime in August, I started that 
the brain fog, which was this real depersonalization. So it really felt like I was in a dream. And, um, and that was really terrifying because I, I was still getting those panic attacks. So I thought, well, you know, maybe this is like, like maybe I'm burning out. Like maybe I'm just having like, um, a bit of a, like a mental health crisis. So, like, right. so long COVID at this point was not even part of my, didn't even think yeah. of it. Um, so anyway, just to make a long, like, it just, it was, yeah, it was like, it, it was becoming every day, something new was happening. And I was feeling like I was completely losing control of my body. And then, and then I, after a hot yoga class, I thought, well, I just got to take myself to hot yoga. I just need to calm down. Oh this my gosh. Like, I had like wow. three weeks of full on anxiety, that full body anxiety. I'd never felt that. I, I've been an anxious person all my life, but that was something, it was beyond anything. It's a whole and, other level, right? Whole other level. And I was taking Ativan, which is like a, you know, um, you, you know, sort of to calm down and that wasn't even working. And yeah. Um, so I I went to this, this hot yoga class my and the very next day I woke up with what I, it was just the most terrifying um, symptom thus far which was I felt like this intense pressure inside my brain but it was also very hot so it felt like boiling brains that's the only yeah. way I can yeah. describe it yeah. and it was like this tight band around my whole head and I had started to lose my language like I couldn't I, I couldn't get words out like it's it's still coming at this point sometimes yeah. I have to really rehearse what I want to say but that was um that was terrifying because I'm not thinking long COVID here I'm thinking no. something is really terrible in my brain right and I also couldn't stop crying so mm -hmm. it was I was I just felt like I was unraveling so I went yeah. anyway I I did three times at the emergency that week yeah. thinking that I was having a real, like a, a, in a huge psychiatric crisis. Right. And, um, you know, fortunately I had, I had no gaslighting. Like I right. was so lucky each time I went in, I, I just asked like, please just give me this test and this test and this test, because I knew enough that if this was connected to long COVID or COVID, then I was going to have to rule these things out anyway. Yeah. Um, and they were just lovely. I mean, I got CAT scans and and x-rays and and it was the third time that I went in where I thought if I don't if I if I don't see a psychiatrist, like I needed to see a psychiatrist because I thought I'm gonna have to check myself in here because I I can't even function. It's like the mm -hmm. psychiatric, the terror that was going on in my mind, I was starting to become quite paranoid yeah. as well yeah. and I um I didn't know what was real and what was not real Got so it. it was it was a real crisis so it wasn't yeah. just like oh I feel like a little dizzy it was like I don't like am I a ghost have I died like that was the kind of experience I was having and it was fortunately so fortunately um the psych I was able to see an emergency psychiatrist and she sat with me for an hour and said this is absolutely long COVID and I was just like are you kidding me like I, I had no idea that this that long COVID could produce those sorts of symptoms like I Susie I can't even describe the like it felt like I had just this old-fashioned <clears throat> diving suit yeah oh I'm like I was at arm's length to reality and yeah. um and uh, she was just she was great she was very clinical there was nothing warm and fuzzy about her but that's all I needed and I was actually yeah. able yeah. to really calm myself down because all my results came back normal right they do mm -hmm. and so she referred me to the long COVID clinic which is about four hours from my community so um so it was everything was by zoom but I I had that, I remember had that intake with the triage nurse was just, again, like this angel, this, this nurse was just so affirming, validating. Mm -hmm. 
And um, she said, you're going to recover. She even said that. So there was, there right. wasn't even a nocebo. There wasn't an even an, a nocebo effect. She said, mm-hmm. you're going to recover. It's just going to take time and you're going to have to learn to rest. Yes. And uh, so that was the start of it, but that wasn't the end of the symptoms because within about a week, the POTS <laughs> came on. There we go. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. that, and that put me in bed. So, yeah. um, and we had a really what is very long- clever like that, isn't it? The body's very clever. If you don't learn to rest, the body kind of takes that decision out of your hands and gives you something that makes you lie in bed. What was interesting, Susie, is I wasn't resting. So this triage nurse was very clear the information. I couldn't even read it. I had to have my kids and my husband read it for me. But it was very clear. I had to rest. I didn't. Mm. I mean, until the pause came on. It's not going to get worse than this. No. No, I can still walk. I can still yeah, walk. Exactly. So that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. But no, no. So on my knees, but not only on my knees, onto my face. Like yeah. I always say, I fell to my face in that time. Yeah. And it was, thank goodness, we had a really long summer. So this was going into September now. So my family made me a day bed on the front deck and a day bed on the back deck. And that's, that was it that's where I lived yeah and uh I I remember at one point just lying I couldn't I couldn't really get up I had to be helped to the bathroom I if I was outside I could crawl onto the grass I could kind of roll off my little bed because it wasn't a tall bed it was like a like you know it was like a mattress yeah, yeah. and I would literally roll around my yard <laughs> the grass <laughs> and just look at my flowers and just look at the sky. I just thought, wow, how did this happen? Mm. How did this happen? So have you ever heard of anything like POTS before? Was this no. a whole new thing yeah. for you? Yeah. Whole new thing. No, had no idea. The the most amazing thing, now again, like I just feel so blessed. I had I've had these angels all along. Um a, a woman who's become a good dear friend of mine now, Gabby Stone, Gabriella Stone. Stone. Um, who's like I you know you the triage nurse at the COVID clinic said look you can go onto some Facebook pages but they're pretty dark places so you might not want to hang out there right and I'm like well I I have I have no one I can connect with about this so I need some community and it was um I think I was on it I was there for a week (laughs) I did get some beautiful support but it was a dark place and for somewhere of a reason I, I Gabby has told me she doesn't she hadn't been checking the the long COVID Canada website at that time or Facebook page and she just happened to go on it that day and she saw my my little introduction and she just <laughs> she rescued me good good <laughs> and and uh and connected me directly with 360 mind body soul Right. Like right oh. at the beginning. So right, right at the worst of my crash, that's what I tapped into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then you started to learn about what was happening for yourself. And at what point did you start to really trust and believe? Do you think that recovery was going to be possible? Or was that always there for you? Uh, you know, it was always there for me. Great. Um, and I, and this is going to sound a little sketchy, but I, I, I consult my intuition a lot over the, you know, over the course of my life. And it's, it's mostly been right. And I, as, 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 as out of my mind, as I felt, I still could feel this part of me that was whole and, you know, kind of witnessing what was going on. And I would have conversations with that part. Um, and I, I got, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Right. You're going to be okay. That was always the message. And, and it was wonderful too. The first time I talked to Gabby on the phone, she said, the first thing she said is this is temporary. This right. is temporary. Right. And uh, I, yeah, so I, I always do, but I, I'm going to be honest, Susie, there were lots of really desperate moments mm-hmm. where I thought, how is this going? To, how is this going to get better? Right. Like how this like every day was the same. There was no, 
it didn't it felt was very slow um yeah every it, it just didn't feel like it was it wasn't it's just not a typical healing process right no. there isn't that lovely moment where you wake up and go oh oh I feel a little bit better I feel a little bit better no no <laughs> no but and then when no. those days do begin to come and then you lose them again that's more terrifying so I think you know did you right. go through anything like that were you having these kind of you know recovery bursts and then the body pulls you back again did any of that happen for you and how did you manage well that did but not for a while I was I was really down for the count for yeah. with with um and you know that the the neurological stuff um that that was my primary um challenge but it definitely started I had those moments when I started to be a bit more active, which was after, it was probably in, at the end of January. And I would have these, these days where <clears throat> everything seemed to really settle. Mm -hmm. And I, I would do a little bit more. My PEM was actually increased neurological mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So by that point, um, and I, I want to talk about this as well, but by that point, the POTS symptoms had really subsided right. because of some medication as well as cold plunging. That was, that was right. always, yeah. yeah. So yeah. how did, so when I, what I started to do, Susie, is when I started to have those days where I felt better, um, I would not, not, uh, I wouldn't waste the energy, I guess. I, I would, I'd sort of hoard my energy a little bit and I would just kind of like, just be gentle, but I would still go out, you know, or I'd still go for a short walk or yeah. um, pull out my paints or something like that. So I wouldn't let it completely stop me. But I, you know, it's this, it's this experience of really getting to know your body and really I really love it like yes. love it to the point where you know it's like I'm not gonna force you to do anything today no. but we are gonna do a little something so it was just this constant negotiating yes you know I love that we're gonna do a little something but it's not gonna be overwhelming we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna work through this um but I couldn't what I'm I loving have, about this is is the yeah. amount of self-talk that you've that you've obviously had going on for yourself in the background with all of this you know one of the things that that I really try and encourage people that work with me on Fern to do is to talk to their nervous system. I want you to imagine there's you and then there's the poorly bit of you, the bit that needs love and reassurance, like a three-year-old oh. in a panic. And yeah. you're kind of doing that naturally, but a lot of people are just in a panic themselves. You know, right. their adult self is in a panic with their three-year-old child. You're doing that brilliant right. adult thing of yourself, which is great. Right. You know, I, I had a, I had a, an image, uh, it was like a, I don't know, some sort of psychic download of me being in a room with a very scared dog, uh -huh. a really, really frightened puppy. And I, I took that as a metaphor for the, for my symptoms. So, yeah. and my nervous system. And so I'm in this room, which is my skin. <laughs> Yeah. with a very frightened um, nervous system right. and and but I wasn't the nervous system does that make sense yeah I, I wasn't the nervous system I was I was there with it and I thought exactly. the only way that I'm going to get through this is if I can befriend every every terrified part of myself yes and when something like this happens that's what like everything comes up like everything mm -hmm. every terrified little part of ourselves right every upset every trauma every relationship battle totally. every totally. issue comes yeah. is is suddenly you really it's like you open the the room 101 of your nervous system and go absolutely oh my gosh Right. Oh, I can't just feel this symptom. I've got to look in that bag and I've got to spread it all out and go, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love you all. Right. <laughs> right. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And it's like, I, I call it a bit of a psychic yard sale. I don't know, in the UK, do you have yard sales? Yes, we, we, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Let's call okay. it a car boot sale because okay. that's there, more there of a thing. Okay, there you where go. Where all of my, all of my shit came oh. out. And I had to, um, and I couldn't do this at the beginning. I just didn't, didn't have the capacity, but certainly I would say it's my, it's, it's in this phase of recovery, it's all about healing the parts of myself that were just harmed and came into, and I've been, have been harmed and I've never really paid much attention to them. So, um, and it's, uh, there's so much self-compassion that has to come in. And I think, thank goodness, I, you know, I think, thank, just thank goodness for 360 Mind, Body, Soul. <laughs> thank goodness for you. I have a pain to say that, by the way, guys. I know, I, don't, I know, <laughs> but I just have to say, there, there's, it, it really did, it gave me community. Yes. I couldn't, I couldn't do all the classes on li- I, live, but I could do some. Yeah. But even the ones I, I did on Ketchup, I recognized some of the people and there was, you know, and certainly like I would, I would, even if I didn't have any, anything in my tank, I would still listen yeah. to the RRR classes because they were freaking hilarious. <laughs> you and Ross, <laughs> and not only the two of you, but I'm like, there are some serious comedians. <laughs> we things. do. We're like, do you know what? And, and it, sometimes I really worry, you know, do, do we take this too far? Because, but I know for me, the, the absolute kind of fundamental piece that people need to do is remember joy and laughter, you know? Yeah. And, and actually, if you're yeah. feeling really sick and you're stuck in bed and you're lonely and you're just fed up, if we can make you laugh. Oh my then, God. Wow, there's a bit of fairy dust right there, which is good for well, this soul. <laughs> everything, everything that you would say, I would like, I remember you saying, um, you know, that joy, joy is very healing. And so I'm a, I'm a little bit of a science nerd. So I like to do things that have some science behind them. Yeah. Susie, just one second. I just need to close the window. Okay, that's fine. Okay. She's back in the room. <laughs> I remember you saying, um, you know, joy is very healing. So I'm like, joy is very healing. Joy is very healing. So I just went and looked it up. You know, I kind of like, I'm like, yeah, found yeah. all of this great research on joy so I'm like well that's it like this was like maybe sometime end of September or something joy every single day what what's going to be my and uh I mean I was having to miss holidays I was with you know little vacations family gatherings and and I just took my phone and this is one of your suggestions and I just started taking photos yes. and I started taking photos just in my uh, I would kind of dig around in the grass and see what I could find and I would really kind of like okay. put it on a zoom lens and I was always quite just joyfully in awe of what I I would be going through my photos and I just I I uh I could feel my nervous system just like calming yeah and more space being created and uh, and then the other thing that I think you mentioned was hu- was humor, and so I started to listen to to funny things every day. It would be like my dose of of uh, like whatever if it, even if it was a cat, like stupid cat videos or yeah, they um, have a place. They have a place have in our a healing. Place. <laughs> okay. uh, golden buzzer moments of our golden buzzer oh, yes. audition. Yes. Love them. Oh yeah, love them. I love that. With you. <laughs> With you. So, all of that peppered my my day um w- as well as a lot of self-compassion so i'm a um i have you i don't know if you've heard of Kristen neff she's a self-compassion yes. that's right um yeah and it was certainly something that i uh i didn't have a regular practice but i was aware of her and i was aware of her meditations and so i started to do those quite a bit mm-hmm throughout the day, sometimes two or three times a day, because this is hard, like this is a really hard journey. And the way that I would um, frame it is I would do a lot of self holding as I'm listening to her meditations and lots of crying, lots of tears. I didn't like none of that was stopped. It was however I felt was how I felt. And um, those 
I think I don't know if that's discussed enough, like how important self compassion is through this journey. You know, it's huge. It's yeah. huge because actually one of the things I think most people get to the point of realizing is they haven't really shown themselves very much of it in their whole lives. No. Because it's not taught, it's not discussed, it's not, you know, deemed, you know, the, the goal, it's not deemed right. sort of attractive. You know, if someone's really busy taking care of themselves, they're almost deemed selfish, you know, because actually oh, we yeah. should be striving to help others right. and to put more and achieve more and be productive and and I Actually, that's the antithesis of self-compassion. So it's very, you know, almost unpopular in our westernized right. culture of, you know, productivity and capitalism. <laughs> we have a very self-compassionate workforce. We'd only be working four or five hours a day because we that's just right. realized it wasn't good for us. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So it's a pattern well, that we need to break. And a lot of people find that that really, really hard. That right. moment of going... I'm doing everything that I do and I know in my super productive, super, you know, logical and rational approach to life. I'm doing all of that stuff, but I just don't seem to be getting any better. And then when you say, okay, you're, you're actually going to need to fall in love with looking after yourself. It's like, yeah. well, what does that even mean? You know, right. and what you've just done there, it's like, literally, you're going to have to hold yourself. Yeah. And that, that puppy in your vision you know yes. that terrified puppy and you need to hold it like that terrified puppy is in your arms absolutely. and you've got to keep stroking until you're better absolutely whatever way that stroking manifests it might be doing right. some work on your breath it might be just saying no to things it might be boundary setting it might be you know yeah. doing the joy stuff all of it that you've talked about and I love that you've just kind of found that naturally for yourself yeah and I I, I would say that I I wasn't I mean, all of these practices, I mean, I really feel that this whole experience is, is, has, is about, like, I had to stop doing what I was doing, which was constant going, constant doing, um, terrible resting, terrible sleep. Yeah. Um, and, and really living kind of a, from my neck up. So, right. you know, really intellectualizing a lot of things. Yeah. And this experience has brought me right so solidly into my body. Um, and now I just have uh, this relationship with it that is so uh, um, it's expansive. That's the only way I can. Uh, so I, I do something called um, somatic tracking, which I yeah. think has been really, really helpful. And, right. and I know um, um, that that would there was a there was one just posted recently annie had posted it just a five minute and on the facebook yes. page beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. um you know and then there's just this universe of sensation in our bodies and what um the self-compassion journey has done for me is it has allowed me to really accept everything that was going on in my body every yeah. single thing so and accept it mm -hmm. and and not um resist it very hard i'm not saying i did this perfectly very like all the time but but just noticing that everything that was going on was me like i can't be at war with my body i can't because yeah. i was never going to heal right yeah ever you have to learn to come home and yeah stop being stuck in the kind of seeking the silver bullet, being rational, doing all of the research that's never really going to be, you know, holding right. the answer anyway. They're just, at the, right. you know, there's just so many theories. And obviously, you know, we are making the assumption that by the time you get to six months or so, you've had your tests, you've taken your drugs, you've yeah. seen your, you know, your cardiologist, you've got your beta blockers, you're on your antihistamines, you're doing all the kind of protocols that are right for you. And then you're left with the legwork. And right. the legwork is the stuff that we're talking about here. Absolutely. Yeah. The care, the compassion, the love, the respect for yourself. Absolutely. And to commit to it. And, and it's healing. That's what I, I think that's what I, I want to really emphasize is that this is not um no, this is not just how to how to you know how how can you bide your time this is actually this is healing your nervous this is, system this is the healing that needs this to happen is the healing yeah <laughs> and um 
and I, you know, I'm proof of it, honestly, like right. I'm, you know, it's the commitment that I've had to this path that I, I, I decided very, very early on that I was going to make something of this. So, um, and I certainly did have my why me moments there, but I didn't, they didn't last very long, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, and that this was going to be uh, a portal. I decided this is a portal into something. Right. And so what needs to be healed? What are the practices that I've promised myself for years that I would start? You know, what are the, the memories that I have that are still charged? You know, mm-hmm. I just made notes of these things and I, you know, the curable app is wonderful, is wonderful, um, right. Right. you know, as far as, right. And Nicole Sachs work uh, has been really, yeah. really amazing. Um, you know, something that was really, so I, I just want to say that Boone Lim, Dr. Boone Lim, who I, I got to say, I have a little bit of crush on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell him. <laughs> Um, he, um, I, I watched, uh, a recovery story with you and Boone and I think, uh, a fellow called Mark, I think it was Mark. Joe? And is it Joe? Is it, is it Joe? Joe? I think it it may have been Joe. Joe. Yes. Okay. It was Joe. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. It's the one on the website. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, Dr. Lim was just something. And I thought, I, I just, I got to look this guy up. And he actually has quite a few other videos on dysautonomia, which I, by that time, I'm thing, like, right? well, this is what I have. This is what's yeah. going on. And so I've watched um, some other videos that he had with other patients. And he had mentioned cold showers, coherent heart breathing, Joe Dispenza. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, careful oh what you God. think. <laughs> Cardiologist of my dreams. Yeah, yeah, and great. So I started the cold showers, great. and uh, I actually couldn't really stand up in the shower. So I started. Um, I used a hose out in the back garden, and I just would lie there, <laughs> hose myself down. For those that don't want to hose themselves in their backyards, you can get little stools to sit in the shower, guys, just so you know. <laughs> I, I did eventually do that, but I actually found that cold showers harder. Um, yeah, they are harder than cold swimming. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. my husband got me a, um, a, a chest freezer eventually in November. And that's where uh, we filled it up with water. And that's okay. what I did it's every day every day, sometimes twice a day. And I really, I really believe that was a huge piece of resolving the POTS like symptoms. Yeah, that was huge. But it was it took commitment, because I I did the breathing It was a Wim Hof It was a gentle Wim Hof breathing. I was just gonna say gentle Wim Hof, right? Gentle Wim Hof. Super important. Super. Yeah, 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 it was everything was gentle. And in fact, the first time that I actually tried to go into a cold plunge, was just when I had crashed and a friend of mine had one and she said well come over and and have a plunge it might help and it was awful it ended up I it was terrible so I really whilst your body is in crisis because it's uh, adding crisis to the crisis it was adding crisis to the crisis yeah but the hose was the hose was a great start that was a good start I love that I just imagined you lying there with a with a cold hose on you like a plant in the in your garden and watering exactly. yourself <laughs> and, and the neighbors I I at that point I did not even care Good girl. I did not care <laughs> but yeah we have some privacy so it was okay but, um yeah yeah the things the things that you go through though right these the, these these moments of of laughter and fun for us they're all born out of complete desperation to get yourself to a place where you're able to kind of get back up on your feet again. And, you know, I'm sure if someone had said to you two years prior, at some point, you're just going to be lying in the garden because you can't get up covering yourself in cold water from a hose pipe. You'd be like, what? No, no. (laughs) But you get to that point where you go, I'm just going to try this because what have I got to lose? What have I got got to lose? My dignity is gone. (laughs) Completely. I have nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, that those that cold plunging um, has done a lot. I mean, one of the things 
that I know now is I can do really hard things. Yes. And I didn't know that before. So this level of grit that I now have, nice. um, that, and I, that started with the cold plunging. Cause I, at first I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. And I would go in for 20 seconds and then, and now I'm, I'm in for four minutes and I love it and right. I crave it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. yeah. It does become addictive. addictive, doesn't it? The yeah. body kind of goes, you need this. Right. Yeah. Right. I remember being kind of called to the sea when I was quite early on in my recovery, maybe kind of month yeah. five or so. And, you know, it was summer here, so it wasn't cold, cold at all. But the English channel isn't known for its warmth. Um, right. And I can remember my body just saying to me, go get in the sea. And I, I just, you know, I managed to get myself there and walked into the sea without a flinch. It was just like, get in. My right. really clear, just get in the water. And I walked in and I think my daughter was with me and she was like, is it not cold? And I was like, yeah, it's cold. And she yeah. went, but you're not flinching. And I was like, I just, uh, my body is saying to me, it needs me to do this. And I'm just following the instruction. Uh, you know, right. it feels natural. Like this is what's needed. It's yeah. so interesting when you get that kind of, that drive to do something, but you can't even really explain why. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I you've done that. I, right. And you're still cold swimming now? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm in water whenever I possibly can. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, this, this, it's, this whole experience has drawn me so much closer to nature and I loved nature before and we're big hikers. My husband's a mountaineer and um, we live in British Columbia. I mean, it, it's, that's the, the nature is a sort of a part of our identity, but yeah. uh I I used it I think as a as some place to exercise I think before right yeah. right the so landscape now, for your fitness to take place in <laughs> totally totally I got it and and now I I go slow I mean I'm I'm hiking I'm hiking every day I probably um I mean I'm I'm up to ten kilometers of hiking not every day but but it's you know and I I've built up slowly but it was um it, it it's there and uh you know I'm doing everything I'm doing everything I I want to be doing and 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 I'm still evolving it's still unfolding um I oh is that your little lovely lovely you know one thing Susie I think I want to mention is this idea too that this is Kind of a, a, an, an illness that the whole family experiences so they do that was yeah so I have two teenage kids um who were very used to me helicopter parenting and doing right. all you know really pulling way more than my weight than was was that I shouldn't have actually been doing everything that I was doing but that was just part of my over character yep. over functioning and then also so when I crashed, it was like the the ship kind of sunk a bit, and uh, everyone got really stressed out. And it was um, it was a a time where all I could do is just say, "You guys have to figure this out," because I can't I can't help you with this. And it was I'm not gonna lie, it was challenging. It was challenging for my husband. Yeah, and we had some very very serious conversations as much as I could at that time but I felt I felt like my fear um, like we definitely had some um, some patterns in our relationship that weren't great and I always knew they weren't great but I had a big fear of really truly addressing them properly and you know when you're when you're feeling that ill you just have no fear anymore you have nothing to lose because you know to that lose. you're so close to the edge anyway it's like like, right. For me, it felt like if I don't start throwing the junk out of the ship, yeah. the ship's going to go under. So I might as well throw some of the junk out. And I've been hiding a lot of this, <laughs> you know, right. or we've been talking about the fact that it's there and we should really take it out because it's really heavy. But, you know, you just get to the point where you go, I'm just going to take it out and deal with it. And, you know, I'm going to kind of throw them out like hand grenades and see what goes off, see what lands. And <laughs> Sorry, I'm at the most ill I've ever been in my life but I'm I'm chucking the big one <laughs> and now I'm this one's coming one. sorry <laughs> yeah I don't do it I feel like I'm gonna go under and never come back and you know yeah. that's great intuition right there right 
So would you say, you know, and it's kind of easy to say on this side rather than when yeah. you're in it and you're kind of crawling around on your hands and the knees trying to hose yourself. Yeah. On a, but would you say that there were things now that you have got from this journey that you wouldn't have got unless you'd gone there? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think if someone had said, well, and people did say and initially, you know, this, there's going to be a silver lining here. I would have punched them in the throat. Like, oh, it was so bad. <laughs> I just it's all there, about the I... timing with that saying, I think, isn't it? That's <laughs> timing. <laughs> but honestly, Susie, I, I have emerged, I am emerging a very different person. Wow. With really, you know, with boundaries, like I actually have boundaries now. Um, I am learning to say no. And, you know, people don't care if you say no. That's what that, I was shocked. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you don't hate me? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Good. I, I, well, I, I think it'll change my career because I've now been exposed to a, the whole mind body world mm. with the most wise people, honestly, like, um, like the wisdom in every single one of your classes, like it, uh, you know, at, at 360 Mind, Body, Soul, the wisdom uh, is just not something I have even in every therapy conference and training that I've done. There's a level of like just heartfulness and full bodied mm -hmm. wisdom. And I don't, I don't want to leave that. I don't, it, I'm, <laughs> so I think it's, it's putting me in a, on a different trajectory I don't know exactly I'm just sort of manifesting it now as as at this point but um yeah and then the relationship it's brought with myself it's yeah. that's the self-compassion and like I just really love myself it's it's absurd absurd and ridiculous but I wake up in the morning and I do some face stroking <laughs> and I say you got this you got this day. It's going to be a great day. You've got this. That's yeah. how I start my day. Great. And awesome. that I would never have done that before ever in a million years. It, I would have popped my eyes open and said, oh, I've got so much to do. Right. You know, blown out of bed. Not productivity, anymore. productivity, productivity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas yeah. now the first and most important thing you do is say, Hi. Hi, how are you, my little friend? Nice to see you. <laughs> What's going on in this body? And, you know, I still, and, you know, I'm right now, I'm, I'm working mostly with the brain fog and that's okay. Um, I, and I, we, I joke about it all the time. So it, it just has become a joke. <laughs> I just laugh. I'll walk into a room and think, oh, okay. Well, that. Oh, I've got some steps in. <laughs> I like this room. The room looks good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, to be honest, that's me as well, right? And I just right. put that down to my hormonal changes now. Right. right. I'm putting things in the dishwasher that I'm like, I just put cleaning products in the dishwasher and like a tub of pasta. I don't know if that should be in there now. I'm just going to take it all back out. <laughs> no one's sore. It's okay. No <laughs> Oh, oh, people, my, my kids see it all the time. But, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they've, they've got to see in the end, it's been wonderful for them. They, they're they way more independent and they've got to see, right. you know, shit happens in life. It does. And um, they, they got to see me going through a really challenging illness. Um, and with some grace, I knew they were watching all the time. I knew they were watching all the time. And uh, that will have I, impacted them way more than you'll ever figure out, really. Yeah. Probably for them, they'll never really understand. But seeing you minute by minute at times will have yeah. been an extraordinary journey for them as, right. as young people learning about the importance of health and well-being, the importance of looking after yourself, the Absolutely. knowledge that Western medical, you know, pharmaceuticals don't have the answer to everything. And just because they don't have the answer doesn't mean there isn't something wrong. It's just that some things are not just solvable with a tablet or with an injection, oh. the, you know, whatever. Oh. 
And actually, when it comes to the nervous system and trauma and the brain body connection, the brain is the body, the body is the brain, you know, it's yeah. the same thing, there isn't like a line here. No, no. It's, you know, we have to begin to understand how we work on a much more complex level. And, you know, pharmaceuticals have been evolved to help kind of squish symptoms. They never address the mm -hmm. why. And right. I think this has been a massive wake up call for a lot of people on why have I got here? Like, how did I get here? Yeah. What's been my journey? Not for everyone, absolutely. But for many people, they can yeah. look and reflect at their life and go, I've been beginning to get an idea why I'm here. And actually, you know, those that are brave enough roll their sleeves up and go, and I'm going to do some good gardening work on myself yeah. to make sure that as I come out of this, I'm going to make sure I don't repeat what Absolutely. got here in the first place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think there was a time in my life where um, I, you know, I, I would have, okay, well, I'm just going to be honest here. I was the person that would go to a yoga class and leave when Shavasana happened. Oh, I know those students. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Got it. Oh no, can't, you know, yeah, this yeah. Isn't doing done. anything. This is I'm done. No, I'm done the hard work. The hard work. No, this is yeah. Um, I would leave fitness classes when the stretching would happen. Right. Right. So, I don't have time for this. Don't have time for this. Honestly, I did that day in and day out. And uh, I I just I laugh 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 now because I love Shavasana and I love right. and I you know it's I love I love the 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 sensual pleasure of just resting now it's it's so deep in my bones now that I and I don't think a two-week illness would have done that no way I needed to be down you at all over a year right <laughs> You can kind of just cruise through a two week illness watching movies and, you know, blowing your nose and, you know, ordering takeaway. You could right. probably, you know, come out the other side completely unscathed. But this challenges yeah. every single aspect of your existence. Every single one. Yeah, every agreed. single one. And I'm excited about who I'm who I am becoming. I'm excited about who you're who you're evolving into. This right? sounds amazing. Yeah. We need you to keep us posted. <laughs> Exactly. I will. I will keep you posted. Well, but it I sounds know, like you're still coming to all of the nice rest classes as well, though. So, you know, there's a, yeah. maybe if you've fallen in love with yoga nidra, maybe it's time for you to train. I think that's true. And also, I've fallen in love with breathing, right. with breathing, yeah. with breath work. Okay. I've, I'm, 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 I'm going deep. I'm going deep into breath work. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and again, that's, that's, that's the, the classes that was that's just the power of of uh that of your community the community that you've created is that it's it's a one-stop shop it really is a one-stop shop like you don't have to I mean I I've been kind of di diving into a bunch of different things in the last few months because I've been feeling better but also I think this is going to be my world in the next for the next part of my life my career-wise and uh, I keep coming back to, you know, I'm like thinking, oh, Susie mentioned that. Like, and it was, it was a totally different program that I'm checking out. It's like, oh, yeah, Susie. Oh, yeah, Susie talks about that. Like, oh, that's exactly the breath class. <laughs> 360, right. Yeah. right? And it's all there. It's all there. It's all there. It is all there. You know there. what I love about the program? And I could say that because it's my program, right? But yeah. when we first put it on, live there was just two classes just breast repair recover classes two classes and it yeah. cost eight pounds a week to do two classes with us yeah and then as more people joined I was like well we're not going to charge more we'll just put more on um okay. so now there's 21 things on the program right and the price has been eight pounds ever since that point okay. and actually now the tax man wants to add VAT so I've actually dropped the price so that the VAT only takes you a little bit above the eight pounds. Cause I was like, well, I just want to keep it at eight pounds. It's really important to me. 
Uh, and I've had a lot of people over the while go, you know, why don't you put the prices up? And I'm like, no way. Oh. No one should ever feel like they can't afford to get better. And right. that's been so key to me. So now the whole idea that people are still paying under 10 bucks for yeah. 21 live classes. I mean, admittedly, you can't attend all 21 because they're all at different times. <laughs> Some, you know, in the UK, there would be like three in the morning. We've got classes now to suit your time more right. we, with our lovely uh, New Zealand teacher now. Mm -hmm. So the whole range is there, but you know, every class you can watch uh, if you don't attend it live. Oh, um, absolutely. Uh, well, I, I arranged the same. That was really critical. I arranged my whole week around the classes. Right. And so um, like creating that schedule at the beginning was really critical. Yeah. yeah. I think, absolutely. you know, a lot of people love it because there's a sense of a timetable and a bit that reminds them a bit like working life. It's yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. Monday. I've got this class that I'm going to do. Right. And it's Tuesday and it's this class and then it's that class. And, you know, they kind of go, that's my Monday to Friday. And then I'm going to book in my doctor's appointments around that. And I'm right. booking my long COVID clinic and I'll go to the, you know, whatever. And it fits and it gives people a sense of purpose, which I think is so key. Oh, it's so and key. You're lying around on a mattress a lot of the time trying to figure right. out, you know, how do I get from here to there without right. feeling? so right. All over. right oh yeah oh I love that you love it so much that's so I lovely to hear. I really do <laughs> right well I swear to god if you get yourself ready we'll employ you as a breath coach when you're ready you just <laughs> let me know thank you <laughs> you're so welcome well listen it's been utterly joyful and I know that you know do search for Angela's posts in the Facebook group because she just has been posting some amazing pictures of her swimming in the lakes in BC. <laughs> just, I'm like, okay, I'm coming. I want to come over. You're all for welcome. the summer swimming rather than the winter, I think is, I don't know mm. where I'm at right now. But, you know, it's, it's so beautiful to talk to you. And, you know, Thank I you. haven't met you before. So it's really lovely just to meet you and hear how everything that, that has been kind of offered from our end has, has impacted you. And, oh. you know, it's it's made my day so I'm utterly delighted <laughs> yay thank you so much Susie thank you you are so welcome and I really hope that this video has inspired some of you who may be in that dark pit of the kind of you know the worst of it just to remember that everything changes everything changes so it's slow mm -hmm. and you might not notice it changing but when you suddenly notice, you realize, actually, I've come quite far from oh, that. Yeah. And that's when those lovely green shoots start to come back. But joy and awe and lifting your eyes from the symptoms as often as you can and just Absolutely. studying nature around you. Even if Absolutely. you're in an apartment in central, in the center of a city or whatever, you can still see nature because nature is very persevering. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, just look for it. And it, it does help us connect to our planet more, which is just good for our souls. I think, you know, we are creatures on a planet and sometimes we just need to kind of, as you did, just lie down on the grass and kind of right. feel. And, uh, and get out of our own stories. I think, I think you know, when we're not well, we, we can create an awful lot of stories. And yeah. I decided at near the, at, right at the beginning that I wasn't going to listen to all the stories. Um, right. You know, I was... I was mm. going to try to go further upstream. Love know? that. And that's, yeah. a, that's a phrase I use a lot. You've got to go upstream, upstream. to find a lot of the answers here. Yeah. And, you know, the yeah. people that I see struggle the most are the ones that get very focused on the here and now and the, and the yeah. symptom and the sensation. And it's like, just, yeah. you know, yes, this yeah. feels terrible. But stop yeah. staring at it as much as you are. Right. Stare right. at it as much as you need to, but no more than that. And right. then see if you can distract yourself with anything anything that will distract you Absolutely. doesn't matter what it is funny yeah. cat videos on instagram doesn't matter just keep yeah. distracting yourself yeah there's a way and it will change so if you're listening to this and you've been given a little bit of hope from this conversation and listening to angela's story that's fantastic and maybe drop angela a message in you the can Facebook because Absolutely. she's there inspiring us mm. she ain't going away by the sounds of it which is nope. great no nope. angela it's been such a pleasure I'm really you, pleased and I'm so pleased that you and Gina Short connected because she's another fabulous. Oh, Gina. Yeah. Thank call out to Gina. Gina has been 
fantastic. In fact, I remember I'm I'm not a particularly a religious person. I would consider myself spiritual, but but Jean is just a she's a deeply spiritual person. And I, I in in one of my desperate moments, I texted her and said, Gina, how do you pray? <laughs> you can't you me pray. It's time. <laughs> And she was just lovely. Um, yeah, yeah, just, you know, reaching out. I mean, people are in this community have been so supportive and just so generous with their time. Um, There's a lot of Rachel love. Whit yeah, Rachel Whitfield has been just incredible as well. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's some really, really supportive people. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things that I've witnessed growing in this yeah. in this kind of era that we've been in just the amount of love that people have to share with each other absolutely uh, we've connected with people we would never have have connected with before no, so no it is beautiful it's easy to say that now on this side of it but just keep keep up the hope guys keep up the hope absolutely keep it up right yeah. i'm gonna say farewell to you and to everyone thank for watching you. thank you for your time and hopefully we will inspire you to keep on going okay and maybe cold water swimming bath all right lots of love farewell all thanks mm -hmm.